there was one line that I still can't believe uh, uh, Judge Jackson said this, but she actually said to the Solicitor General from Louisiana, she said, you've got the First Amendment hamstringing the government. Now, think about that. What? That's the whole thinking purpose. Like, it's supposed to, the government's not supposed I mean, the fact that you have a, a person on the United States Supreme Court make that statement in the arguments on a case about censorship and, and the First Amendment, it's just like, I, I'm like, I, at one point, I, kind of, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, yes. how could she make that statement? Let's go nice. to Representative Jim Jordan. All right, Representative uh, Jim Jordan, thank you. Can you hear me, sir? I can. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for thank you for being here. And we actually have some people out here who did attend your. I, I don't know if you call them like wrestling I, clinics. Yeah, yeah. It's my brother's my brother's camp. He's he's uh, he does a great job and a great business he has. And so yeah, we were we were just talking about that. It would be great. I what I wouldn't give to see you. I don't know what your go to if it was a single or an ankle pick. You know, uh, someone <laughs> someone there like Zuckerberg or the like. You know what I mean? Man, in, in, in a consensual way. Yeah, a man who knows a little something about wrestling. Yeah, well, that's a long time ago for me. But uh, I wanted to play middle linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though I'm from Ohio. I grew up in the 70s, and I love Jack Lambert. But uh, when you're my size, you got to wrestle. So it was a great sport for our family. Like I say, my brother's done done well with his business there. So all good. Well, it never really leaves you. I mean, if you you also look like you stay relatively trim. My point is, I'm pretty sure you could beat the hell out of most of the people in our House of Representatives. <laughs> so that's something, if nothing else, which shows yeah. restraint. Uh, let me ask, yeah. and you're doing this live from the Rumble Studios, which we appreciate yep. because – we know that's a safe space to use the word where uh, we're not exactly. going to be censored on Rumble. What was the we we had an amicus brief? I know you've been leading this charge here. What was the main argument that you laid out in your own amicus brief here today? When the government does something that they you know through through some uh, private company that they can't do by themselves, when they're coercing, when they're censoring through someone else, that is still censorship, and that's the fundamental line. And I just came from the argument. I, I will tell you that there was one line that. I still can't believe uh, uh, Judge Jackson said this, but she actually said to the Solicitor General from Louisiana, she said, you've got the First Amendment hamstringing the government. Now, think about that. What? That's the whole thinking purpose. Like, it's supposed to, the government's not supposed I mean, the fact that you have a, a person on the United States Supreme Court make that statement in the arguments on a case about censorship and, and the First Amendment, just like... I, I'm like, I, at one point, I, kind of, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, yes. how could she make that statement? <laughs> That's like it's saying crazy. the problem with the Second Amendment is it's going to make the government afraid of coming to your house to take your guns away. <laughs> it's exactly right. It's so scary what, what we heard there. But um, I thought he did a good job, the Solicitor General from Louisiana, laying out this is a fundamental, you know, First Amendment case where you've got the government – uh, I think coercing, significantly encouraging is another one of the standards in the test in some of the, the cases that have been in front of the court before. And I think that's clearly the case. Remember this too, Stephen. On the third day of the Biden administration, the White House sends an email to Twitter saying this, take down this tweet ASAP. And the tweet was from RFK Jr. Right. Everything in the tweet was accurate. But on the third day, they're they're starting the censorship operation. And the irony is they're going after the very guy who's going to run against them in the primary, for goodness sake. If that's if, if that's not the, the definition of why government is is not supposed to do this, I don't know what is. No, it's, that's a very good point. We were just talking about today, for example, the bloodbath controversy with Donald Trump, where what they do is it's impossible to find his original comments where it couldn't be more clear. This is not even remotely controversial. They're referring to a bloodbath regarding the automotive industry. You don't find that. Right. You find what all the talking heads say. That direct, And you add that up day after day after day after day, Not let alone operate. one story. Hunter Biden laptop. One story changes the outcome of the election. I don't know if you know this, Representative Jordan. The first time the public saw the Hunter Biden laptop, uh, Mayor Rudy Giuliani was on this show, and it was incidental. And I said, wait, wait, what? He goes, yeah, that's, 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 that's the Hunter Biden laptop. I go, wait, that's the actual? He goes, yeah, he left it over here at a computer. I have it right here in front of me. I'm like... Th yeah. This is happening. And of course, that got removed. That got suspended yeah. that sure did. that week. And we've been at the middle of this accident. Let me ask you this, though, because I know you've uh, you've subpoenaed a lot of records and a lot of this information wouldn't have been public if not, for example, Elon Musk taking over yep. was Twitter. Very good. Now, X, very true, which we're very grateful for. What are the most shocking yep. examples 
that um, you've seen through the uh, records, right, that you've subpoenaed between the Biden administration and big tech platforms? Do some spring to mind? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that question first. So we had this one communication uh, from Nick Clegg, uh, like the, the head of global affairs or global something for, for Meta. And Nick Clegg is talking with, this is actually an internal communication we got through our subpoenas. But Nick Clegg, this is when the government's pressuring uh, Facebook to take down certain things right. and, and, and certain posts. And Nick Clegg says, this, this looks like it encroaches on free expression. And, of course, the irony is Nick Clegg, former deputy prime minister in, in Great Britain, is lecturing and, and explaining to Americans how the First Amendment works. I mean, I thought the right. irony there was unbelievable. But I want to back up a second. I was there Saturday when President Trump used the term bloodbath. And as soon as he said it, I go, they're going to go after that term. They're, they're, I know exactly what the press is going to. We've seen it. You've seen it time and time again. Of course. And of course they did it. And anyone who, who was there, the context was trade issues with China relative to the automotive industry. Th 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 this is how crazy the left is. But yeah, that, that one uh, email from uh, internal email from Nick Clegg. Where where he talked about, I think this approaches on free expression. I thought the irony of the, the former deputy prime minister uh, telling Americans how the First Amendment, how our Constitution works. Yeah, it, it is. And it's some of these things are incredible. Now, they're not as shocking to us because we've lived through this. For example, we've had, a, a, you know, content executives at YouTube ask us to send them our videos privately so they can let us know what changes to make if we don't want to run afoul of borderline guidelines before doing it publicly. Scary. Um, not only being demonetized for not violating the rules, but, you know, the same thing happened with Facebook. This was something that they admitted to. It happened leading up to an election. We had an election stream, biggest that had ever taken place. Then it's removed by the next election. And the issue is not so much that the left is. We all know the left. They're crazy, right? What happened right. is you had the mainstream media, legacy media, who had a stranglehold. And everyone thought there are no gatekeepers anymore. This is great. This is what social media allows. And for a while it did. And yep. now, of course, they're working hand in hand with the government. We're almost back to three networks. It's basically Meta, you know, Google, Alphabet, sorry, YouTube. Um, and thank God Twitter was purchased. But outside exactly. of that, for the longest time, this was a trifecta. You can toss in TikTok. You can toss in maybe Apple, Spotify, Microsoft. It's five companies. And, and they have all made decisions regarding content the same day. For example, Hunter Biden. For example, Alex Jones removing him. That's, that can't be a coincidence. That's 10 people on a conference call, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, no, you're exactly right. And there's this, um, I always call it the template c c trying to tie in the, the bloodbath uh, comment and what the press did there with how this whole thing operates. It, it, it's, I think pretty basic. What you see time and time again from the left is the left will tell a lie. Uh, the, uh, the big media will report the lie. Big tech will amplify the lie. The laptops, Russian disinformation, Russian information operate. So big tech will amplify the lie. And then when we try to tell the truth, they call us racist, they call us names, and they say you're crazy. Right. And that's exactly how it plays out time and time again. And because they have this overwhelming uh, support in, in big media, legacy media, and, and in big tech minus Twitter, they're able to like kind of overwhelm everyone. And now so many people think, well, what, why did, would President Trump use that term? completely out of but that's the template now the good news is i think more and more people are waking up to the template that's used by the left and how big media and big tech weigh in with that uh which is the good news and it's because we got folks like you out there telling the truth and getting cutting through all the all the all the garbage and baloney we get from uh today's left well i appreciate you saying that and by the way it's in spite of what has happened right and people like rumble and i will say this you're one of the people who's been spearheading this it's in spite of a lot of our representatives because i can tell you we've had Calls and meetings with representatives saying we want to do something, but guess what? They all have podcasts. So they don't want to push that hard. They all have Facebook pages. So even Republicans, not going to name names, but they're not out there with the zeal that you have, and it consistently surprises us. It's in spite of the fact that not a lot has been done because we've been out here taking the hits, and I know that you have actually been there taking the hits. Not all Republicans are created equal. Let me ask you this. How do you expect or how would you expect the judges to decide in this case, and then how would you like them to? If they, uh, how would you like them to? If they, for example, if they rule against Biden, do you think they'll keep it narrow or go after two thirty? You know, more broadly in its application. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I will tell you based on what I heard today. It's. it's I think it's kind of hard to gauge where they're going to land. You could. You could definitely sense. At least I could. At least I felt this way that the the left judges, the the judges on the left, they're not going to be on the side of of 
of, uh, you know, stopping this censorship on the side of the solicitor general from Louisiana who was arguing the case. Uh, but how it all shakes out, I don't know. Someone did raise, could we keep it kind of narrow? Um, I think that that's a possibility, but I, I just, you never know. And sometimes what you think happened in the, in the, in, in the arguments is not how the decision actually, uh, how the decision actually uh, plays out. Right. Yeah. It seems like it could go either way. And I, we do have George in there and he did say he was a little bit disappointed um, that they didn't really push, for example, the censor, the algorithmic censorship, that that, that wasn't yeah. really brought up and that they kind of dropped the ball a little bit when comparing, meaning people on our side, this list uh, from Louisiana, when it came to comparing newspapers to these platforms. It's very important to delineate yeah. between publishers yeah. and platforms. And, and, and we've been making that argument for a long time. It, it seems like maybe it's unfamiliar to some people and they're making the argument on our side with good intentions. I know Gerald has a question here. Yeah, uh, Representative Jordan, I, just really quickly, I know you've been very vocal about 230, and obviously the, the only reason that this show has survived is because of our Mug Club subscribers. The only reason we're able to file an amicus brief today was because of the Mug Club subscribers, but not everybody has that. Do you yep. see any relief coming soon on 2.30 and finally cleaning up this problem once and for all? Because it's just been a long, long, arduous fight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I, I don't know. I don't I don't see any 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 quick remedy, frankly, with divided government where 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 the you know the White House is, the Senate control. I mean, it just I just I don't I don't see that. Um uh, I, I'm one of the things I think that did get raised by when um when the government was was arguing and questions from some of the more conservative judges is, was there a uh, pressure put on these social media companies to say, oh, that, that there's antitrust concerns if you don't censor. There's other issues that, you know, we can influence other things that you care about if you don't censor the speech. We're encouraging you to censor. And I think that's really important because that's one of the things from our committee work that we sense was going on. There's actually an email, I think, um, where an internal email with Facebook where they said, well, maybe we could, it, it, I'm paraphrasing, but it basically said something like, maybe we should go along with the suggestions from the government because we got bigger fish to fry other issues to deal with. Right. And so was government wink, wink, hinting, oh, we're going to have some antitrust concerns, other issues relative to 230 if you don't censor the speech that they were trying to get them to censor, which was almost uh, universally conservative speech. Of course, yes. Well, and I would love, uh, you know, if somebody in your team has a chance to read this brief, please get in touch with us. We sure. have a lot of emails, phone calls, right. videos of, of big tech doing to this, doing this to us over the years that we would love to just get in your hands oh, and give you ammunition it. to be yeah. able to use. Trust me, we have them dead to rights on yeah. a couple of things. We just need yeah, somebody to take to the it. phone call. By the way, including <laughs> including exchanging of actual funds, of actual money, just so you know, from big tech and then yeah. doing things where they actually would wow. issue a refund, which was effectively an admission of fault. I won't say which platform, but we have that taking place. Wow. And I have a lawyer on full-time retainer who what? is... Uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll have one of our lawyers. We'll have one of our lawyers on the committee staff get in touch with you guys. Okay. That's that's, that's Perfect. important. Yeah, no, yeah. we're incredibly grateful, and I know that you're a busy man, so I don't want to keep you too long, uh, Representative Jim Jordan. But let me ask you this: greatest American wrestler of all time and greatest international wrestler of all time. Well, there are three: Gable, uh, Smith, and Sanderson. Uh, so you know, Gable was the, the Gable was the guy when I was growing up. Y'all looked to train, you know, undefeated in college until his last match, and then wins the '72 Olympics. And I was a uh, what I was eight years old watching that, and I thought, you know, that's that's that got me fired up. John Smith came along. I happened to actually compete against Smith. Smith was maybe the greatest six-time world champ, two-time Olympic champ. Uh, and the international style was just phenomenal. Great guy. In fact, our youngest son was uh, assistant coach for John uh, one year when he first got out of college. But then Sanderson, undefeated right. in college and Olympic and world champion, and, and maybe more importantly now, won like yeah, 12 or 13 titles for Penn State. They're just they're going to win again uh, this week. It starts Thursday. you got to get on the ESPNU and ESPN because they cover the whole darn tournament, which I'm looking forward to. Yes, as a coach. And also the embarrassing thing is uh, I think – did the same ankle pick on every one of his top 10 ranked opponents. <laughs> yeah. Like with Kale Sanders, it didn't matter Bro. what you, you knew it was coming yeah. and you couldn't stop it because of his setup. We had Daniel Cormier, you know, UFC champion on the show. Oh yeah. And he goes, Oh, you know, Kale, you know, Kale. I was like, yeah, I watched your matches. He, like, he ankle picked me, bro. I saw it yeah, coming. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. stop it. <laughs> like, that's just, by that. the way, if you, you might, you must like UFC too. So Bo Nickel was a three-time national champ for Penn state is killing it in UFC. He's going to fight in UFC 300. Yep. We just went to the fight in down in Miami last uh, a weekend ago, but uh, Nichols fighting in the next one out in Vegas, 
and he's just killing everyone. So he's not he's not a championship fight uh, yet or title fight yet, but he's on like the the, the main card. So yes. I, I really think this guy is is going to do well. Uh, he's already doing well, but he just like he has that that it factor you can see in in these he, in these fighters. He's doing very well, but he did say that he believed he would beat a wild chimpanzee in a fight, which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> so outside of that, outside of that, I'm a fan. But when he said yeah. it, I said. Do you understand that they go for the face and groin to tear it off immediately? This is not the same thing. So, uh, yeah. all right. No, I will be tuning into that, especially UFC 300. Uh, we appreciate it, Representative Jim Jordan. You're welcome anytime. And we will be in touch with our brief, getting it to your folks. Great. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Keep up the great work. Thank you, sir. God bless. This has been Representative Jim Jordan. Thank you. Watch Ladder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.